Jonathan Arnott. You told us that you were happy to run out of time when my colleague asked you about ending the travelling circus and having just a single seat for Parliament. Uh, can you understand that for many taxpayers in the United Kingdom, uh, just like in Italy, the idea of moving Parliament backwards and forwards every month from Brussels to Strasbourg at a cost of hundreds of millions a year is symbolic of the lack of value for money in the EU budget. I, I want to believe that you mean your pledge when you say that you will seek high value for money from the EU budget. Will you support a single seat to save taxpayers' money? Will you support preset failure criteria for all EU-funded projects so that we know whether they are a success or a failure? And will you support cuts to the bloated number of European Union staff at a time when the EU's army of bureaucrats is bigger than the British army? Thank you. I am getting worried about the size of the British Army. Um, on your first question, um, very respectfully, I'm saying this very respectfully, you know that it is a matter of treaty change, that the question you're posing to me is a matter of treaty, treaty change. Um, some of my colleagues in the humanitarian community sometimes uh, say about me that I'm a wonder woman. Let me tell you, I'm not. <laughs> so treaty change is a treaty change. If, there is, if this is to be desired by those who, are the sign, uh, who signed the treaty, that would be a matter uh, for them. Uh, in terms of uh, how we screen for cost effectiveness uh, our activities, this is what performance budgeting is all about. And we are moving in performance budgeting with the new MFF. And I think it would be very important for the Parliament to continue to keep us on our toes as we do so. It is not easy because in performance budgeting, we have to define not how much money we spend for what, but what is the outcome? What is the result from the spending? And the big problem we always face is that often this pushes us to measure what is easy to measure rather than what is most important. And then performance focus may lead to unintended negative consequences. So we have to take it prudently and carefully forward, but there is no excuse whatsoever in the demand that you've uh, framed in your question that I'm sure would come from, from uh, many others that we do uh, so. And, and I very, very sincerely am committed to work towards this objective. Jonathan Arnott. Madam Commissioner, uh, you tell us uh, of the story of your city in Bulgaria with the metro station, uh, the metro system because of EU funding. And you're giving that as an example of why the public should be more pro-European Union. Uh, but the reason I think that people are losing faith in Europe is precisely that, because they understand that it's their money, it's taxpayers' money, which has been sent to Brussels and then Brussels claims the credit for it. Uh, in my view, the one-size-fits-all mentality, the idea that Brussels can centralise power, take responsibility from national governments, and then expect citizens to be grateful for it, is part of the problem. So my question to you is this. Is there even one concrete area of spending, one example of something where you think control should pass back from Brussels to the member states to be spent locally by the local people? Thank you, and uh, uh, the um, uh, metro in uh, Bulgaria has a station called Europe, not European Commission, uh, because uh, people know there it is uh, the citizens of Europe uh, that, that made it possible uh, for, for us. Uh, but on the, on the question of uh, where power should be, I'm a very firm believer that power should be at the lowest possible level where it can be executed successfully. And I agree that there are some areas where there is no room, 
even for the national government, it is the local, say, local fire brigade that, that saves people when there is fire. But there are some areas where the collective is much stronger. Uh, when we talk about research, obviously when we network our university, universities and our researchers, we are more uh, better equipped to compete in a world of giants because we are competing against countries like the United States and China and India and certainly uh, even the United Kingdom on its own would find itself a bit uh, less comfortable in, in this. Uh, but together we are very, very strong. Uh, we now would have a, a first vice president for better, better regulation. And, I, I, and you would see us coming to you talking about here is something that we, we have been doing, but it doesn't make sense to be uh, done uh, in this manner. We will be coming to that. We are already doing it. We have a refit program. This is a program to, to take, to get rid of things that either are old or not necessary anymore, or indeed the principle of subsidiarity says uh, it is better done at, at the level of, at the national uh, level. I am also the, the uh, Commissioner for uh, Civil Protection. And uh, there, there, there was some thought about building civil protection capability in Europe. And I said, no, our civil protection capability is the network of civil protection capacity of our member states. Our role is to connect it and make it possible to deploy more effectively.